أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لسان يفقه قولي In the name of Allah the most beneficent and the most merciful I bear witness that there is no God but Allah I bear witness that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his last and final messenger. Respected sisters and brothers, may Allah grant us Jumu'ah Mubarakah, may Allah grant us Jumu'ah full of blessings, Jumu'ah full of Iman and Taqwa, may Allah teach us something that benefit us tonight in this Jumu'ah. Amin. May Allah ease our pain, may Allah forgive our sins, May Allah cure the sick amongst us and heal them and mend them. May Allah forgive those who passed away. May Allah accept the repentance of those who repented. May Allah grant those who are striving for his sake the best of this dunya and the best of the hereafter. Amen. The last person to enter paradise. Page 171. The last person to enter paradise. Who is this person? And what did he do to be the last to enter paradise? Shazlin, go ahead, sister, and read. The last person to enter Al Jannah. Assalamu alaikum. Bismillah. The Prophet وسلم, has told us about the, the last man who will be brought out of hell and will be admitted in paradise. And the conversation that will take place between him and his Lord, and the incredibly great honor that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bestow upon him. Ibn al-Athir collected all of the hadiths on this topic in Jami al-Usul, from which we will quote the following. Number one, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu said, the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, I know the last of the people of hell who will be brought out of it, and the last of the people of paradise to enter it. It is a man who will come out of hell crawling on all fours. Allah will say to him, go and enter paradise. So he will come to it and will suppose that it is full. He will go back and say, my Lord, I found it full. Allah, may he be glorified, will say, go and enter paradise. For there you have something like the world and ten times over or you have something 10 times better than the world. He will say, are you making fun of me or laughing at me? And you are the, the sovereign of all? I, Abdullah, saw the messenger of Allah smiling so broadly that his back teeth were visible. He used to say, that is the one who is lowest in status of, people, uh, of the people of paradise, Bukhari Please. and Muslim. Very good. Stop there, please. Let's understand this hadith, which is incredible and give us great hope. The last person who will enter paradise. Can someone give the page? Page 171. One seven one. Put something in your books like this so that you remember which page we stopped at, inshallah. Yeah, everyone shall. Okay. There are many hadith that Imam Ibn al Athir, may Allah have mercy on him, collected in one book regarding the last person to enter paradise. He studied all the hadith about the last person who enters paradise and he collected them, may Allah reward him, in a book called Kitabul Usul. Or Jami'ul Usul. Jami'ul Usul. 
uh, Abdullah bin Mas'ud radhiyallahu anhu narrates that Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said I know the last of the people of hell who will be brought out of it so the last person to enter paradise is someone who was in hell a muslim who burned in hell paid for his sins paid for his sins Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said the muslims who enter per, uh, hell fire only their faces will be saved na'udhu billah may allah save us only their faces will be safe all their bodies will burn every part in their body will burn we don't want that we ask allah his mercy yet the last person to enter is someone who was in hell then after the intercession of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he when we say he mean his day group but he represents them he will be brought out and allah azza wa jalla tells him to go to jannah go to enter paradise so when he will be brought out of it of hellfire and the last of the people of paradise to enter it it is a man who will come out of jahannam crawling on all fours on his knees and hands meaning he will be so exhausted so in pain that he will be crawling have you seen people in pain they go down on their knees it's so painful that they can't even walk so he will crawl, crawl like like a cat and on his stomach crawling so much pain allah will say to him go and enter paradise so he will come to it and will suppose we will find it full he will find it full full of people so he will go back and say ya allah i found it full allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says go and enter paradise for there you have something like the world and 10 times over you see this world how much money do you think the exist on this world right now trillions of trillions of trillions of trillions of trillions of just us dollar let alone pounds let alone the most expensive currency in the world billions and billions and trillions you will get 10 of that let alone what gold silver what do you want name it platinum what do you want diamond 10 times of what exists right now in this world not in this planet earth allah knows what other planets have and then the person says ya allah are you laughing at me <laughs> he will be so surprised he will tell allah are you making fun of me allah himself laughs at this man he cannot even believe himself rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam smiled so much sisters look at me until his last teeth were seen he laughed it means he laughed smiling until the last teeth molecules are seen it means he was really laughing out loud that's the last one that's the person who has been in hell when he goes 10 times the treasures of this dunya of the dunya not of planet earth dunya includes the seven skies so how wealthy is allah how much wealth he has left for all of us mashallah that is the last guy sisters and brothers first it feels very full meaning that he has no chance because he he sees it from the outside then allah says go and enter paradise i will give you 10 times of the treasures of the dunya so how about those who enter jannah without questioning may allah make me and you amongst them and our parents and our loved ones who left us 
and our teachers, our good students who don't give us hard time, including all of you. I mean, you're... so that is what is waiting for you guys. This is when you are the last. So there is high hope there, inshallah. Yeah? So Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam will smile so loud that people see his last teeth. When he said this hadith, the Sahaba saw him laughing that this man couldn't comprehend how much because he was in hell. And now he's, Allah is going to give him 10 times the dunya. So how about those who enter Jannah direct? May Allah make us amongst them, like the shuhada, the martyrs, the ulama, those who have done so good, pleased Allah. Yeah. yeah. All right, continue, please. Uh, according to a report narrated by Muslim, he, Abdullah, said, the messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, I know the last person who will come out of the fire. It is a man who will come out crawling. It will be said to him, go and enter paradise. He will go and enter paradise, but he will find that people have already taken their places. It will be said to him, do you remember the time that you were in hell? He will say, yes. He will, he will be told, make a wish. So he will make a wish. Then he will be told, your wish is granted and 10 times the world. He will say, are you making fun of me? And you are the sovereign of all? I saw the messenger of Allah Alaihi Wasallam smiling so broadly that his back teeth were visible. The Midi reported, uh, the Midi reported a version similar to that narrated by Muslim. Number two, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu reported that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "The last person to enter paradise will be a man who will alternately walk, stagger, and be touched by fire. Once he has passed out of the fire, he will turn to face it and say." Blessed be he who have saved who has saved me from you. Allah has given me something that he did not give to the earlier and later generations. Then a tree will be raised up for him, and he will say, O oh my Lord, bring me closer to this tree so that I may enjoy its shade and drink of its water. Allah may he be glorified, will say, O oh son of Adam. If I grant you this, will you ask me for something else? He will say, no, O Lord. And he pleads that he will ask him nothing. Allah will excuse him because he is saying something that he has no patience to resist. So he will bring him closer and he will enjoy its shade and drink its water. Then another tree, better than the first, will be raised up for him. And he will say, Oh my Lord, bring me near to this tree so I may drink its water and enjoy its shade. I will not ask you for anything more. Allah will say, O oh son of Adam, will you not promise me that you would not ask me for anything else? He will further say maybe that if I bring you closer to this tree, you will ask for more. The man will pledge not to ask for any more and Allah will excuse him seeing that he has no patience to resist. He will bring him closer and he will enjoy its shade and drink its water. Then a third tree will be raised up at the gate of paradise and it will be better than the first two. The man will say, Oh my Lord, bring me closer to this tree so that I may enjoy its shade and drink its water and I will not ask for anything more. Allah will say, Oh son of Adam, did you not promise me that you would not ask me for anything more? He will say, yes, O Lord, I will not ask you for anything more. His Lord, may he be glorified, will excuse him, seeing that he has no patience to resist. He will bring him closer to this tree. 
when he is brought close, he will hear the voices of the people of paradise and will say, O oh my Lord, admit, admit me to it. Allah will say, O oh son of Adam, what do you want for sure so that you ask me not anything else thereafter? Will it please you if I give you the world along with similar to that? He will say, O oh Lord, are you making fun of me when you are the Lord of the worlds? <coughs> Ibn Mas'ud smiled and said, Why do you not ask me why I am smiling? They asked, Why are you smiling? He said, Because the, men the messenger of Allah smiled. They asked, Why are you smiling, O messenger of Allah? He said, Because the Lord of the worlds will smile when he is asked. Are you making fun of me when you are the Lord of the worlds? He will say, I am not making fun of you, but I am able to do whatever I will. This version of the hadith is reported by Humaydi only in Ifrat, to, in Ifrat of Muslim, whilst the report quoted before it agreed upon Bukhari and Muslim. Humaydi said, we counted it as being narrated only by Muslim because of the extra details included in it. <laughs> okay. Humaydi, Al Humaydi, is the Sheikh of Imam Muslim. Like I am your Sheikh, Humaydi was the Sheikh of Imam Muslim. He's the only one who narrates this hadith in details. This hadith is narrated by Imam Muslim from his Sheikh Humaydi. Just for you to know a little bit, to get used to these names of ulama. Yeah? Because this ummah doesn't know it's ulama. The, um, the ummah knows celebrities, TV stars. Piram Lee has more followers than I don't know who. Although he died. People still watching his. If you ask our youth who is Humaydi, they think it's a restaurant from Hyderabad. Humaydi is the sheikh of Imam Muslim. And he's the sheikh who makes the students. MashaAllah. So Imam Humaydi is the one who narrates this hadith and Imam Muslim narrates it from him in details. Like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring that person out of hell and plant a tree for him. And then he drinks from the, that tree, the water of that tree and eats something from it. That he promises. I will not ask you anything, O oh Allah. But then he cannot, temptation. Then Allah plants another trick. Bring him closer, meaning seek it, seek it. Because he was in extreme pain. If Allah put him in extreme joy, he will never understand. And had it not been for Allah to destroy death, from extreme pain to extreme death, you die. If Allah didn't, take death already. From extreme to extreme, you go crazy. Look at a person when he is in extreme heat, you bring him in extreme cold. Or vice versa. Or vice versa. So, meaning Allah gradually wants to is, is his transition to Jannah. And when we say one, it doesn't mean one person. The group of people like that. Continue, please. Sheikh. Let's finish this, please. Let, let me finish this point and then I open the questions and ask. Let's finish okay. this. Yes, okay. go ahead. Go ahead, sister. Abu Sa'id al Khudri radiallahu anhu reported that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, The person who has the lowest status in paradise will be a man whose face Allah will turn away from hell towards paradise and cause him to see a shade tree. The man will say, O oh Lord, bring me nearer to this tree so that I may be in its shade. The rest of the hadith is similar to that reported by Ibn Mas'ud, except that it does not include the words, O oh son of Adam, what do you want for sure so that you will ask me not anything else thereafter, etc. Abu Sa'id's version adds, Allah will tell him, Ask for such and such. And when he will state his wishes, Allah will say, you will have them and 10 times more. Then he will enter his house 
in paradise and his two wives from among Al-Hur Al-Ain will enter and say, Praise be to Allah who has created you for us and created us for you. He will say, No one has ever been given anything like that which I have been given. It is reported like this by Muslim immediately following the hadith of Ibn Mas'ud. Very good. So, so much pleasure coming, inshallah, to even sinners among this ummah who will be forgiven eventually because they were Muslims. See, you see why we need to make shahada for people before they die? Because at least we save them from eternal hell. They will not go for to hell for eternity. And that's a big ni'mah, sisters and brothers. So try to make shahada for people. Don't give up on people. Invite people to Islam. Teach them that shahada is a great thing, although it's an easy statement. La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. If somebody says it and believes in it, he will not at least rot in hellfire forever. Go to hellfire for a few, I don't know how long Allah knows. And then eventually he or she will go to paradise forever. Yes, sister who wanted to ask, go ahead. Hi, yeah. Um, how many versions of this? How many um, people narrated this hadith? Because at one point it says this hadith is only is reported by Humaydi only. Da, da, da. Um, but then you've got before that Ibn Mas'ud and Abu Said. I don't quite understand how. Okay. What it all okay. means there? Yeah. Okay. Very good, very good. Number one, number one. You should differentiate between the narrator of the hadith and between the collector of the hadith. Narrator is Sahabi. Sahabi is like you, my students listening to me. The collector will, be, will come after years. And he collects from his sheikh, his teacher, until me. So I repeat. Narrator, you say, I heard Sheikh Zubair saying, Sheikh Zubair taught us. Who? You, you, my students, you know me, you saw me. So these are the Sahaba. So Abdullah bin Mas'ud is the Sahabi who heard the Prophet Sallallahu saying, and he is telling us. From Abdullah to Imam Muslim, there are 200 years. So there are many shuyukh. It's called the chain. It's called the chain of the hadith. The hadith has a chain and had an essence. Essence is what the prophet said. The chain are the people. Azliya from Shariza, from Zurina, from, from, from Shaykh to Shaykh Zubayr. So when we say only Imam Humaydi narrates the hadith, Imam Humaydi was the sheikh of Imam Muslim. Imam Muslim is the collector, is the man who wrote the hadith for us. He said, only my sheikh narrates this hadith. That doesn't mean the Sahaba didn't hear it. That doesn't mean many Sahaba didn't hear the hadith. It means it reached Imam Muslim only through this sheikh. No other sheikh says this hadith. I hope this is clear. The reason why I don't want to go in details with you into the hadith, because hadith is very technical science. It's like physics. I'm not talking about the explanation of hadith. I'm talking about ilmul hadith. So it's like physics. You need, to, you need to have a little background. And that background needs time for me to do another lecture, inshallah, maybe called uh, Introduction to Ilmul Hadith, where I teach you how the Sahaba narrated the hadith and how the ulama 200, 300 years later verified that that hadith is authentic. Only the Muslims have this knowledge. No other nation on planet Earth has documented the hadith and have came up with a, a science that verifies what the prophet said. The Jews don't have it, the Christians don't have it, 
No one has this knowledge. Only we, the Muslims, should be very proud of yourselves. That not only we know what the Prophet said, we know even those who said what he said. Only the Muslims. It's very technical science, huh? Very technical science. So now, when we say only Imam Humaydi, meaning there is no other shuyukh among the shuyukh who narrated what this hadith. What shuyukh? That's what it is. Huh? What is shuyukh? Shuyukh, whatever. Plural yeah. of sheikh, plural of me, ulama. Ah, okay. Yes. Yeah, shuyukh is plural of sheikh. Ulama, the ulama, the teachers. Good. So just, just so I understand this on this particular, with this particular hadith, um, this, the narrator, the sahabi is Ibn Mas Mas'ud. Yes. Is that correct? And the collector was Imam Muslim. And um, Humaydi is a collector or a narrator? He's a collector. He's the Sheikh of Imam Muslim. Okay, understood. Very good. But the hadith can have many narrators because sometimes the Prophet says it in Jumu'ah, in public, going to a battle. Sometimes only one Sahabi hears him. Only one. He's with his wife talking to her. She tells us what he said to her. Aisha, Umm Salama, Hafsa, this is called Hadith Ahad, Hadith Satu, meaning narrated only by one Sahabi. There are a Hadith Mutawatir, Banya Banya Orang, heard the Prophet. Like, in, like now, how many students? 23 students are listening to me. Times two, time those who are hiding, um, wives and husbands and children, I don't know. Huh? Now Mutawatir. You are hearing me all together. If I am with my wife or my son or one student, it's called Hadith Ahad. Sheikh Zubair told me. I see. But I, I would like to know, why did you ask this question? Beside, no, beside willing to know. You, you're asking it, me? Yeah. Is it because one Hadith, uh, you are worried that if one person narrates Hadith, the hadith is not strong or what yes kind of because i thought this was a, a a fairly important point about dragging people out of hell um so i i thought no, if, this if, is if, one, if it's, yeah if it's no, 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 no narrators no, then, no, no. then okay not All like right. that not like that not like that very good i i knew it i knew it it's good it's good but it's not like that for quran and, and sunnah even one person even one person is enough for Quran and Sunnah, for anything else verified. Quran and Sunnah different. One person can tell us it's okay. Who was with Muhammad وسلم, many times when the Quran was revealed? No one. He catches one of the Sahaba teach him the ayah. So please understand. For Quran and Sunnah, we can narrate one person because the Sahaba don't lie. One thing about Sahaba, they never lie. Not a single Sahabi was a liar. Unlike humans of today. So again, I repeat, when Hadith is narrated, reported by one Sahabi, it's still authentic. If the chain is strong, and I don't want to go to hadith science today, let me continue with my, uh, just believe, believe sisters and brothers. Really believe, believe, be proud of the ulama. Do you know who is Imam Muslim? Do you know who is Bukhari? Bukhari used to wake up 14 times verifying hadith at night, one hadith. Who amongst us gets up to verify something 14 times? We may get up the toilet because we eat too much sugar three times. Imagine Alim getting up 
14 times because he wanted to verify if the hadith was okay or not. At most responsibility, at most accountability, fearing Allah because they know they are reporting the hadith of Rasulullah. They are collecting the hadith of Rasulullah. Okay? So when we say only so and so narrates this hadith, that's different than we say only so and so collect this hadith. There is difference. The Sahaba are the best after Rasulullah are the Sahaba in, 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 in uh, credibility, in integrity. They should never be questioned. The Sahaba should never, ever be questioned. Is this clear? Other people can be questioned, but not the Sahaba. Enough honor that they have seen the Prophet Enough honor that they were with him. Enough honor that they died for his religion while he's still alive. So when we say Abdullah or Aisha, or they never lie. May Allah be pleased with them. Okay? All right. Number nine, Sister Nazaria. Number nine. Those who will those who will enter paradise before the day of resurrection. The first human being ever to enter paradise was the father of mankind, Adam alayhi salam. We said, O oh Adam, dwell you and your wife in the garden and eat of the bountiful things therein, where and when you will. And the Almighty said, O Adam, dwell you and your wife in the garden and enjoy its good things as you wish, but approach not this tree, or you run into harm and transgression. But Adam disobeyed Allah by eating from the tree which Allah had forbidden him to eat from. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent him down from the garden of paradise to this world of distress and misery. Okay, before we go in. I don't believe Adam was in paradise. But out of respect to the book, I'm going to read with you this. I am from those who don't believe Adam was in paradise. Paradise, where are we going to go? Paradise on, on earth, yes. Adam was on earth. Malaysia is paradise compared to the Saudi Arabia. Malaysia compared to Saudi Arabia is paradise. OK? Now, you. You may see ayahs there, right? The ayah has to be interpreted. Ayah has tafsir. I personally, Sheikh Zubair, I'm saying it again and again. I don't believe Adam alayhi salam and his wife, Hawa, were in paradise. Where are we going to go? Because there is no forbidden tree in, para in paradise. Paradise, where are we going to go? Paradise on earth, any island. Lankawi is paradise. Uh, 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 Tioman for, for, for somebody coming from Iceland. What is Tioman for somebody coming from Iceland? Paradise on earth. Anyways, I, out of respect to the book, I will study that with you now. But I am a strong believer Adam salam was not in paradise where we're going to go. Where are we going to go? Nobody has gone. Adam was in paradise on earth, place called Jannah. Al Jannah, the garden. There is a city in Algeria called Jannat. Gardens. Does that mean Algeria has paradise? They are, you, need, you, need, you, need, you need to know the language. The problem is that we study Islam in different language than Arabic, like English. And that's where the problem is, the translation. The Quran never said he was in Jannah, where are we going to go? The Quran said he was in a garden. The translation says paradise. That's the problem. Let's see what these verses are saying, and then I interpret them for you. Now, you want to follow the opinion of those who say Adam and Eve were in paradise. 
and then they they were sent down to earth because of their sin or they exited but if i give you many examples and i'm not going to repeat myself it's up to you you want to follow this opinion or the other opinion up to you up to my, my students no no harm done continue please We had already beforehand taken the covenant of Adam, but he forgot, and we found on this part no, no firm resolve. When we said to the angel, prostrate yourselves to Adam, they prostrated themselves, but not Iblis, he refused. Then we said, O Adam, verily this is an enemy to you and your wife, so let him not get you both out of the garden. So that uh, you are uh, out of the garden. That's a better translation. Let him not get you out of the garden. How can an enemy of Allah stay in paradise? Who is the enemy of Allah? Answer me. Who is the enemy of Allah? How can how can he stay, how can he stay in paradise? That's yeah, what would they would they not um uh, when they before they refused to prostrate were they bad before that or only they were, he was cursed shaitan was cursed when he refused right yes Devil but before Devil. before that hold on hold on hold on he was cursed right or not he was cursed how did he come back to paradise to get Adam out? When did he say to, to Adam, eat from the tree? When did Iblis say to Adam, eat from the tree? Disobey Allah and eat the tree. Before he was cursed or after okay, he was after, cursed? After, after. I got you, tree. after, after. Okay, so did he come back to, to paradise to seduce him? It was on earth. And when Allah said to the angels, bow, the angels were on earth. Earth is full of angels. You think the angels stay only in the sky? It's up to you. I'm not going to waste time because I did my research. You want to listen? Fine. You don't want? It's okay. Believe that Adam and Eve were in paradise and they were sent. And the Quran never used the word come down. The Quran said exit. Tilwar. The Quran never said, go down to earth. Never, not a single ayah in the Quran that says, go, I exile you to earth. He said, get out of it. Get out of the garden. But it didn't say, go down from the garden. And there are, there are no forbidden trees in paradise. Where are you going to go? Everything is lawful. In dunya, there are forbidden trees. There are trees, if you eat from them, you die. Poisonous. That's why if you are in the jungle, you should always look what the monkeys eat. The fruit that the monkeys eat, you eat. The fruits that monkeys don't touch, never touch. So monkeys become your teachers. Continue. Okay. So let him not get you both out of the garden so that you are landed in misery. Therein is enough provision for you not to go hungry, nor to go naked, nor to suffer from thirst, nor from the sun's heat. But Shaitan whispered evil to him. He said, Very oh, good, Adam, very good. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Sister Nazaria, hold on. Seek it, seek it, seek it, seek it. Okay. I need to go be with you, Aya, 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 Aya. Are you going to be naked in paradise? No, you are going to be covered. Are you going to be hungry in paradise? No. So why did Allah say to Adam and Eve, don't listen to him. If you do, you're gonna be hungry and you're gonna be naked. Nakedness and hunger are product of the dunya, not product of paradise. There is no hunger and no nakedness in paradise. There is no sun in paradise. Here, here Allah says you're going to be under the scorching sun. Sun is in the dunya. In Akhirah, there is no sun. In paradise, there is no sun. So the Quran, where do we get the sun? Where do we get the nur? Directly from Allah. When you go to paradise, inshallah, 
the nur comes straight from Allah. You don't need the sun. Because the nur of the sun can hurt. The sun, scorching sun. So Allah is warning uh, Adam not to leave the, the Jannah of the dunya because once he is out, the sun will scorch him. Because in the Jannah, there is jungle, there is, there is green and he can, he can hide under the shade of the trees. Okay, continue. Uh, go ayah by ayah. Fine. But Shaitan whispered evil to him. He said, O oh Adam, shall I lead you to the tree of eternity and to a kingdom that never decays? As a result, they both ate of the tree and so their nakedness appeared to them. And they began to sew together leaves from the garden for their covering. Very good. Did Adam and Eve sin or not? Yes, they sinned. They disobeyed Allah, right? In Jannah, nobody disobeys Allah. Jannah, where are we not going to go? There is no sin committed. The Prophet ﷺ said, in paradise, where are you going to go? No sin has ever been committed. That includes the sin of Adam and Eve. So we need to interpret the ayahs properly. The ayahs is that paradise on earth, a garden on earth. Somewhere where it's green, beautiful. When Allah created Adam and Eve, he created them in very livable place. He gave them everything. But because they were tempted and they ate from the tree, Allah exiled them to the desert. That's why he found her under a rock in Jabal al-Rahma in Arafah. He walked and she walked and they got lost. How can shaitan come back to paradise to, to trick? Uh, so he tricked Allah for coming back. He tricked the angels. No one detected him. It was on earth. Allah says to them, do sujood to Adam. Adam created from what? Tana. Only on earth there is Tana. Paradise, there is no Tana. There is something else. So you think Allah created Adam in paradise? From Tana to Tana. From earth back to earth when we die. And then with resurrect. Minha khalaqnakum wa fiha nu'idukum wa minha nukhrijukum taratan ukhra. Allah says, from it, we created you all, including Adam and Eve. You humans, all created from this dunya, this earth. And to it, we will return you. And from it, we will resurrect you one more time. How many ayahs and ahadith you want me to give you? And logical explanation. But those who taught you that Adam and Eve were created in Jannah, they never give you any evidence. And you believe them because that's childhood. We all grew up like that. When ulama sit and do research and debate, and up to now, any ustaz, I talk to him, he never talked to me again about the subject. They like, they just say ayah. Yeah, I, I see the ayahs. How to, impret, how to interpret them? I know, I know that's the ayah, but the word Jannah, so all the words of Jannah in the Quran means paradise? No. I can give you right now many examples where Allah says Jannah, and he doesn't mean paradise. He means garden on earth. Here is an ayah from Surah Al-Kahf. And he entered his Jannah while he was zalim to himself. Who will enter paradise while zalim? It's talking about the rich guy who had so much land, fertile land. He entered his Jannah arrogant. Oh, I have big land. I have garden on earth. You need to know the language also. Quran is in Arabic. And whoever doesn't know Arabic, just listens. Seriously. Arabic language. You have to be master in it, not just speak it. Most Arabs speak Arabic, but do they master it? 
There is a big difference between speaking the language and mastering the language, understanding the language. Big, big difference. Go ahead, go ahead. Thus, did Adam disobey his Lord and allow himself to be seduced? But his Lord chose him for his grace. He turned him with forgiveness, he turned him with forgiveness and gave him guidance. He, Allah said, get you down, both of you, all together from the garden with eternity one to another. That's a mistake. Allah never said, get you down. Pay attention to me. Look at me, everybody. Who knows a little Arabic? Of course, all of, uh, all of you will be quiet now. Well, you, even if you know you, you don't want me to ask you. Who knows the word to come down in Arabic? What to say? How to say? to come down, who knows? To come down from atas to bottom. Anzal. Is it Anzal. Nuzul, Nuzul, Nazala. Very good. Nazal. Nazal. The Quran didn't say in Zilu. The Quran didn't say in Zilu. The Quran said Ihbitu. Ihbitu is the same word Allah used to Bani Israel when he kicked them out of Egypt. Ihbitu. Out. Kalwar. So were Bani Israel in the sky when Allah told them Ihbitu? They were in Egypt. Leave Egypt. Leave, uh, leave the garden where I created you. It is what we call deportation. When somebody, when the government is not pleased with someone, for good or bad reason, they deport him out of the country. So Allah deported Adam and Eve because they sinned from that land where he told them, don't eat from this tree. And remember, the first sin was because of food. So you be careful about food. Food, the desire to eat is very strong thing. This is why Allah disciplines us with fasting. Because the first sin to obey Allah was with food. Shaitan knew how to get Adam and Eve. Anyways, so it is not get you down. That's the problem of translation. The Quran said, Ihbitu. Or Ihbita. Ihbitu, plural. Or Ihbita, Adam and Eve. Means, Kalwar. Get out. Get out of that Jannah. It's no more garden for you. Go suffer a little bit in the dunya so that you understand. So they went out to the desert. Sheikh, do we know exactly what is that land? Most ulama said Al-Iraq. Iraq, as the Americans said. Iraq, as somebody else called it. It was fertile land beautiful land, and they got lost. And the Quran didn't mention which one, but they were created on earth, guys. All right. The messenger of Allah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So I should correct the previous sentence. Get you out, both of you, all together Very from good. the garden. Get you anything. out. Get you. Yes, that's the correct translation. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also saw paradise. Buhari reports from Imran bin Hussein that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, I have seen paradise and I saw that its inhabitants are the poor. And I have seen hell and I saw that most of its inhabitants are women. Okay. No, hold on. Yes, true, true. Sisters, I have seen, I tell you, for example, I have seen something. How would you interpret it? I have seen Beijing. I never been in Beijing. I've seen it in my dream. Interpretation. I have seen. Doesn't mean I was inside. So was the Prophet Sassim inside hell when he saw hell? He saw it from far. 
and I came to prototype. I have seen paradise and I have seen the majority of people, the poor. Does that mean there are people in paradise? No, no one yet is in paradise. No one yet is in hell. That is prototype. Allah telling him the, the, the majority of people who will be in paradise will be the poor people. And the majority of the people in hell will be women. Who can tell me why? Somebody may ask you, enemy of Islam, create doubt. Why you're saying the majority of people are in hell are women? Does that mean we want women to go to hell? No, but it's a fact. When I state a fact, doesn't mean I want it to happen. And when we say the majority of the people of paradise are poor, does that mean the rich will not enter? No. But the majority will be poor, like the majority of people in uh, hellfire will be women. Who can tell me why? She, be, um, be, because there are more women in the world than men. Excellent. That's number one. There are more women in the world. Just look at this class. How many sisters versus how many brothers? Brothers are ulama. They don't need ilmu. They're going to paradise. They're sleeping or watching or I don't know what. <laughs> Allah poor, ladies, ah, poor ladies, may Allah reward them. They are that good. They want to learn the deen. Oh, the brothers, khalas. Sheikh, I pray five times a day. Why do I need to listen to you? Don't listen to me. Listen to Quran and Sunnah. As if I care. I don't even know who you are. I'm doing this for Allah's sake. I repeat. The majority of people in hell are women for many reasons. Number one, they are the super majority of the world. So when they are, definitely they will be in hell. Number two, women do big mistakes they don't understand. Women, no matter what you do to them, when they get upset with you, they forget all the good. 99.99% of women are like this. When they are pleased with you, ho oh, ho, oh, you think you are, I don't know who. When they are pleased, uh, displeased, Allahu Akbar, may Allah be with you, my brother. Why, sisters? Why you forget the good times? Rasulullah Sallallahu said, women, when they get upset with their husbands, they say, I have seen nothing good with you. You have done nothing good to me. You are not good to me. You are rude to me. You are harsh with me. You are. That's not right, sisters. Don't do that. Second, yakfurna al-ashir. They are not grateful to their husbands. Be careful, sisters, from this habit. Another thing women do, perfume. Perfume is zina, sisters. If a man smells your perfume, you committed zina with him. So many women, Yom al Qiyamah, will come, called, come here, oh, prostitute. She will say, I never committed zina. You used to put perfume and go out. People smell you. Sheikh, if sisters, you put your channel five or channel six or channel 22, or I don't know what perfume you use, if another man who is not mahram to you smells it you committed zina with him so women have been committing zina all their lives without knowing so sisters what to do put perfume one hour 45 minutes before you leave your home at least it dies out some of you before they meet a man they put what is this She's leaving her car, taking the elevator, elevator close proximity. People are with you in the elevator. How come you put all that perfume, sister? Some women dressed yet not dressed. Kasiyatun ariyat, ma'ilatun mumilat. Na'udhu billah. Rasulullah Sassim said they are neither dressed nor undressed, meaning half-half. And they go 
right and left, right and left when they walk. Be careful, my sisters. I'm warning you. You don't want to come Yom Al-Qiyamah shocked. You thought you prayed. You thought you were wearing hijab, but you were not paying attention to your perfume. So do perfume, but before you leave home, like at least 45 minutes. May Allah beautify you, protect you. I don't want my sisters in hell. I don't want to see you in hell. A lot of people don't pay attention to this. They think it's a small thing. Why your lips are red before you leave your home? What are you trying to, 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 to show what? No, be careful, my sisters. May Allah save us, save you. Assalamualaikum, <clears throat> Sheikh. She, uh, when, when, uh, could we relate the um, Rasulullah Sallam seeing the paradise um, through his uh, experience during uh, um, Isra Mi'raj? <clears throat> yeah, but he didn't, he wasn't inside. I see doesn't mean I was inside. I've seen Mid Valley Mall. That doesn't mean I was inside. You know what is Mid Valley, right? Here in Kuala Lumpur. Mid Valley, I pass by. Yeah, I've understood. seen Mid Valley Mall. That doesn't mean I was inside. Yeah, understood. It's a, yeah, understood the prototype concept. Yeah, yeah. Understood. Language, language also. Arabic, Arabic. See, the problem is translation because everything we are reading, unfortunately, now is in English. And I just showed you the mistake that the translator made with the Surah 20, Surah Taha, verse 123. Get you down. No, get you out, both of you. It's not get you down. They were not down. They were not up to come down. They were inside the garden on earth. Okay, here is... Here is one evidence. If you ever question me about it, I will never talk to you again. What did the Quran say when Allah wanted to create Adam? Before he created Adam, what did Allah say to the Malaika? Go to Surah Al-Baqarah. وَإِذْ قَالَ رَبُّكَ لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ إِنِّي جَاعِلٌ Who knows the ayah? إِنِّي جَاعِلٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ خَلِيفَةِ What is Ard in Arabic? Ard in Arabic, what is it? Earth. Allah didn't even create Adam yet. He said to the Malaika, I am about to create a new creation, Khalifa, on earth. From the beginning. The confusing word is the interpretation of the word Al Jannah. Al Jannah means garden and it means paradise. It means two words. The word Jannah, there is a city called Jannah in the middle of the desert in Algeria. That doesn't mean paradise. So if I go there with you, does that mean, mashallah, we entered paradise? It's just beautiful oasis in the middle of the desert. The people call it Jannah. You can Google it and find it in the desert of Algeria. Janet in, in French, Jannah in Arabic. That doesn't mean the paradise is in Algeria. Okay. So when the prophet said, I seen paradise, that doesn't mean I enter paradise. When he says, I've seen hellfire, that doesn't mean he was inside hellfire. Na'udhu billah. Okay. Among the people? Among those who will enter paradise before the day of resurrection are Shuhada, the martyrs, Islam, a Muslim reports that Masruq said, we asked Abdullah ibn Mas'ud about this ayah. Think not of those who are slain in Allah's way as dead. Nay, they live, finding their sustenance in the presence of their Lord. He, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud said, 
We asked about that too. And the Prophet wasallam said, their souls are in the bellies of green birds and they have and they have light suspended from the throne. They wander about in paradise wherever they wish. They, then they take their shelter in those lights. Their Lord will come suddenly to them and ask, do you desire anything? They will say, what thing could we wish for when we can wander wherever we wish in paradise? Allah will come and ask this three times. When they see that they will not be allowed to be silent and without reply, they will say, Oh Lord, would that, uh, would that we could return to our bodies and be killed your, your, uh, for your sake one more time? When Allah the Almighty, all merciful, sees that they have no wants or needs, they will be left as it is. Whoever dies will be shown this position, his position in paradise or hell morning and evening. Muslim reports from Ibn Umar that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said when any one of you dies he is shown his position in the paradise or hell morning and evening if he is one of the people of paradise he will be shown his position in the garden as one of the people of paradise and if he is one of the people of hell he will be shown his place in hell as one of the people of hell and he will be told, this is your position until Allah resurrects you to eat on the day of resurrection. Allah Akbar. Very good. But that doesn't mean we enter paradise in the grave. We see our place in paradise. The bad people will see their places in hell. But that doesn't mean they are in hell, nor are we in paradise. We enter paradise after judgment day. People enter hellfire after judgment. That is the i'tiqad of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. The aqidah of people of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah is what I explain. Now, all what we have seen, my brothers and sisters, makes our belief very firm that paradise exists and that hellfire exists, but no one one has gone to paradise yet. No one has gone to hell yet. There must be day of judgment where Allah Azza wa Jal give fair trial, fair trial. Those who find good should thank Allah and praise him. Those who found bad should blame themselves. Now, any question before we end? Let me see your questions in writing. No, I did not say women cannot, cannot wear perfume at all. Brother is asking me, uh, so Sheikh, does this mean women cannot wear perfume at all? No, women should wear perfume, but for their poor husbands. Kesian, husband. Women has to really adorn herself to her husband or in her house, even if she's not married. She can really beautify herself. Beautify yourself, sister. No problem. May Allah give you more beauty. But don't go out. When you go out with that beauty, Malaika will curse you until you come back. Don't show your beauty to people. That's what most women do as a mistake. Look at our women. They look like hantu inside the house. When they go out, they look like I don't know who. It should be the other way. The person who has right over you is your husband, sister. Beautify yourself for him. And Allah will reward you. When you go out, hide that beauty. You shouldn't show your beauty. You should not reveal your beauty. It's haram. Because there are people, psychopaths. Maybe you don't mean anything, but there are people who are sick in their hearts, who may compare you with their wives, or they don't have women, or they don't have wives, uh, wives, and then they may attack you and harm you. So beauty has to be concealed, except to the people Allah mentioned in Surah An-Nur. Your parents, 
your husbands, the parents of your husbands, your sons, your uncles, the people who have no right to marry you. Mahram. Our women are making big mistake. When they go out, they go out like, wow. Why, sister? What are you trying to prove? To prove to what? If you love Allah and his messenger, cover your beauty. Conceal. Conceal. In your house, put the best perfume to your husband. To yourself, even if you are not married or your husband is not even there. Put perfume, is good for you. Most women, when they are going out, they put perfume. That's not Islamic. That's haram. That's a major sin. I'm telling you now, don't say Sheikh didn't tell us. Up to you. I'm not with you 24 7. Up to you. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum sahamatullah. My understanding for the conclusion for today's topic is no one ever been in paradise or hell yet, including the prophets. Is that correct? We will only go to paradise or hell after the day of resurrection. How about Allah's other creation? Excellent. That's exactly, you understood it right. Very good. How about other creation? What do you mean? You mean the angels? Uh, uh, animals, uh, genes, Allah's do, other creation. Do they, go, do they go to paradise, you mean? Oh, hell. yes, yes. They will, yes. Okay. Like us. Thank you, Shay. Yeah. But the animals will turn into dust. Unless the animals you want. The animals you want, you may love a cat. Sheikh, I love my cat. I know most of you like cat, love cat. Some of you love cats more than you love your Sheikh. Show you. Can you love me like you love your cat? All of you? Like me? Huh? What I mean <laughs> is this. The animals will turn into dust, except the animals you love. You want them to be with you. Allah loves them. And there are animals in paradise too. So they are different than these animals. The jinn, the Muslim jinn will go to paradise. The kafir jinn, the shayateen will go to hell. Hold on, Yunus. I, I, I want to answer Sister Azliya. Hold on, hold on. Salam, Sheikh. Uh -huh. Why does Allah create more women and yet so many are without judo? Because you women don't want to share husband. You women don't want to share husband. That's why judo is there. But you don't want to share. What can I do for you? See, silence. Nobody's talking. That's the truth. Allah knows what he's doing. Is you ladies, if your husband wants to marry another one. Ah, but if you are second or third wife, no problem. The problem is always the first wife. She doesn't want others to be with her. But the second and third, she wants to be second and third and fourth. The first one doesn't want. That's the problem. So it's not problem of why Allah this, no. Is it then incumbent on the man to go out and um, uh, seek the hands of other women because you married. know women we can't go around asking who wants to marry me. You know, hold on, it's hold on, hold on. Marriage, marriage, and has conditions. He wants to marry a second woman, third woman, fourth woman, up to that level. He needs to fear Allah and do justice. If he can do that and open four houses or two houses and feed both of them and spend on all of them, may Allah help him. He's not doing something wrong. This one is happy, this one is happy. Or, or this one is happy, the other one is not happy. What can you do? 
better than cheating, better than hiding. Thank you. You're welcome. And we cannot force a man who doesn't want, who wants just to marry one. A man who is takot, like me, uh, one, one enough. Takot to die shahid. Takbir. <laughs> yeah. But I'm saying for those who want, no one should look at them down or as if they are this or as if they are that. He wants to marry. He can have two houses or three houses or four houses. But condition, he has to have the ability to look after them and do justice, which is near impossible. Near impossible to do justice. But that doesn't mean he should not do it. Sahaba had more than one wife. Rasulullah himself had more than one wife. That's another subject. I am just saying if only people are content, accept Islam. Accept Allah, accept his messenger. Okay. Who has another question? Yes, Sheikh. Ah? Huh? Sheikh, I want to ask a question. I remember reading. Yes. I remember reading about the animals that going to Jannah, among them will be the camel of uh, Prophet Saleh and, uh, and the mountain hood will be going to Jannah and um, the end of uh, uh, Suleiman, Suleiman and, and etc. I mean, um, so are they exclusively? Are these, these animals exclusively going to Jannah? Like I the never sheep? heard. Are they the yeah, sheep I of never, Ibrahim al -Islam? I never heard such thing, but I won't be surprised if they are in paradise because Allah is so merciful. And if Allah wants them to go to paradise, what is my problem? And the dog of the people of the cave and the Ankabut, Kalankabut. What else? All the animals mentioned in the Quran. No. If Allah wants anything, it will be. And Yusuf, you should worry about you and me if we are going to Jannah or not. Not the aunt of Suleiman or the, 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 the she camel of Saleh. You and me, we don't even know. Are we going to paradise or hell? You should focus on that. May Allah bless you. I think <laughs> you have eaten so much uh, this one. Anduri today or I don't know what. Shay, Assalamualaikum Shay. Waalaikum Assalamualaikum. Shay, I, I mean, right now, I mean, uh, we pray that we at least enter Jannah, Shay. But once we're in ah. Jannah, as you say, the seven seven levels of Jannah, is there, and, and the highest level of Jannah means among the benefit is that you will see Allah, um, I don't know, you see twice a day or something like that. You know, you see more often Allah, the higher you go up the Jannah rank. Once you are in we're going to see all this. The, the book okay. is still, we are still in page 179. Okay, okay, Shay. But my question was actually, uh, my, my question was, uh, go ahead, what's your question? My question is once we're in Jannah, let's say we're at the lowest level, is there any possibility within uh, that time that we can be uh, promoted Arifin. to a higher level? Yes. Arifin. Hope, yes. hope in Firdaus. Hope in Firdaus. Say, Allah, give me Firdaus, me and Azura. <laughs> yes, Shay. Takbir, alhamdulillah. Okay, Shay. Uh, say, Ya Rab, give me all. Don't say first. Say always, inshallah, we will be in Jannah number seven. I mean, all of us. You have to have high hope in Allah, not low hope. Okay, that's what. You will see Allah once a week, every Jumu'ah. You'll be just looking for Jumu'ah when Jumu'ah comes. While you are in Jannah, you forget all that pleasure. You'll be just obsessed by seeing Allah. Today we're going to see Allah. Today is Jumu'ah. 
and you don't sleep, you never fall asleep. You don't get tired. You are always excited because there is no tiredness in paradise. We will explain. Just sabar, keep coming to class. Sikit, sikit, jadi bukit. We learn. Alhamdulillah, we are learning. Please share the knowledge, sisters and brothers. Whatever I share with you, share with people, friends and family, over lunch, over dinner, over high tea, over low tea, over English tea. Although Britain doesn't have tea, they say English tea. La hawla wa la quwata illa billah. Huh? I really silent today. What, why? I'm thinking of having coffee with you this Saturday, Jay. Oh, takbir. Wow. Inshallah. Saturday, busy day for me, brother. I have four classes. I'll see you Very during Sunday, the high therapy maybe. class. High therapy class. Uh, ah, sir. yes. Oh, okay. The first come, thing come. The Inshallah, Very inshallah. Good. Inshallah. Most welcome. Shay, okay. Shay, sorry to Shay. On that point, Shay, are you planning any Umrah trip, Shay? For, I love for the group. Umrah, but yeah, I, I, I am... Mm -hmm. I am hoping to go this Ramadan, inshallah. Last 10 days of Ramadan. But I haven't, I'm not organizing any trip yet. So I don't know. If anything, I will let you know. But please do not delay your Umrah. Plan now and go for Allah's sake. Go uh, this Rajab if you can. If you cannot go Sha'ban, if you cannot go Ramadan, but don't delay. If there is a chance we go together, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us from his tawfiq. If not, go on your own. May Allah bless you. Don't delay, my brother. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Allahumma shfi mardan muslimin. We have small children. May Allah grant them shifa. Small children who are sick. Uh, children of my uh, sister Ifa. May Allah give them shifa. Allahumma shfi anta shafi. شفاء لا يغادر سقما أذهب البأس إيش في أنت الشافي لا شفاء إلا شفاءك شفاء لا يغادر سقما يا أرحم الراحمين يا رب العالمين اللهم يا رب we have a brother who is going through chemo brother Johan bin Ruslan may Allah grant him شفاء may Allah give sabr to his mom and to his dad to his wife to his children may Allah give him strength to tahan the chemo intensive chemo. Sister Surifa, may Allah grant her shifa. May Allah grant you all shifa and afia. Sister Ilahi, Sister Serenade, Sister, uh, the best son of Sister Fawzia, the, the girl who is missing, may Allah bring her back to her family. I mean, Ya Rab, if you hear good news, let me know, inshallah, about her. Ya Rab, Allahumma shfi anta shafi, la shifa illa shifa, o shifa illa yabad al-saham. May Allah cure Sheikh Zubair, Heal him from the pain of his back in his neck. And may Allah grant us all access to Jannat al-Firdaus. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.